Hello students. Uh, in this video, we will continue with the discussion of the motion in a straight line. The part we are going to discuss is related to the graphs. So we will discuss first uh, how we can calculate the basic physical quantities from the given information in graphs. And then we'll discuss a few examples, how the questions can be framed uh, uh, which involve the graphs. Okay. So first graph, uh, let's, let's try to draw position time graph, displacement time graph and uh, uh, velocity time graph, acceleration time graph for a few different scenarios. Okay. So before going to that, okay. Now, what do we mean by position time graph? Okay. Or we can call it as XT graph. Let's say assuming the particle was moving on X axis, then with the time, its X coordinate will change. Okay. So what we plot basically here is on one axis, we take its position and on the other axis, we represent the corresponding time. Okay. So let's say we have a particle. Okay. Let's take a simple example. At t is equal to 0, the position of the particle was given by x0, uh, which is equal to, uh, let's say, 1 meter. At t is equal to 1, let's say it was at x0 is equal to 3. And at t is equal to 2, let's say the particle was at x2 is equal to 4, something like that. Now, so here, how we can roughly represent, okay, the these three, okay, time and position coordinates in this particular graph. See, the body is continuously moving, so its position continuously changes, but I have chosen three instances of time where its position would be as represented here. So at t is equal to zero, the position is one. So if we take the corresponding point on x-axis, this is what that point will correspond to. So this point corresponds to t is equal to zero. Okay, at t is equal to 0, the position is x0. So, this is that particular point. So, original position, let's call it A. And then, at t is equal to 1, the position of the particle is given by 3, x is equal to 3. So, we can say x is equal to 3 corresponds to this particular point. Okay. And then, at x is equal, t is equal to 2, the position of the particle, I mean, the space is not sufficient here. So the position of the particle is given by this would be 4, this would be 3, this would be 1. So these are the three positions of the particle. Just a minute, I made a mistake. This corresponds to point A, this corresponds to point B and this corresponds to point C. So these are the three positions of the particle. So between 0 to t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 1, the x would be continuously changing. That information we don't know here. So roughly we can say this would be how the position time graph of that particular particle is going to be. So from the graph, let's say the position time graph of some body is given something like this as seen in that graph. Now if we wish to calculate the position at a particular time t, what we do? Let's say I wanted to calculate position at a time t is equal to half now what i do i draw a vertical line okay uh, passing through t is equal to half then that line would intersect the graph at a particular point so corresponding to that point it will have some uh, y coordinate which would be nothing but its x position so that would be the position of that particle at that particular instant of time so this is what position time graph basically tells its position a particular instant of time. So observe one small point here at t is equal to 0 the position of the particle need not be 0. So at t is equal to 0 position will be depending on where the particle was present initially. But now if we consider displacement okay displacement now if we come uh, 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 try to draw or understand the displacement time graph so this is the trying to draw displacement versus time graph so displacement we basically say okay final position minus initial position or change in position displacement during interval of time 
So when a particular body starts moving or let's say the motion of a body is uh, uh, being observed from t is equal to 0 then the initial position okay uh, let's say given by x naught okay then we can write displacement is equal to x represents position after certain time t xi represents the initial position which is nothing but x naught now in this case at t is equal to 0 the displacement of the body will definitely be equal to 0 i mean let's take the above example itself so at t is equal to 0 the motion has just be, been observed so displacement is equal to 0 the body doesn't practically have any displacement in one second okay between t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 1 the displacement 0 to 1 is basically given by final position minus initial position which would be 2 units similarly displacement in the first 2 seconds of time would be position at t is equal to 2 minus position at t is equal to 0 which would be 3 units so for the above example the corresponding displacement time graph would be something like this okay the graph would basically have the same shape but the only difference is that here the graph started at x is equal to 1 but whereas here the graph would basically start at 0 okay i mean s is equal to 0 that's why whenever we define the velocity of a body okay it's nothing but we can write rate of change of its position rx stands for position of the particle or the same thing can also be written as the rate at which it undergoes displacement or its displacement varies okay so this is the displacement time graph so if you have a displacement time graph how do we calculate average velocity or instantaneous velocity from the graph okay let's try to discuss that okay. suppose let's say let's take first scenario let's say we want to discuss okay just one minute So let's say we draw displacement versus time graph. Let's say this is how the displacement versus time graph is. Okay, rough graph. I'm taking some random graph that we possess. Okay. So first, if we wish to find average velocity, average velocity during an interval we want to find we basically define it as displacement during that interval divided by time we can or we can also write it as change in position by time in which that position has changed suppose let's say in this particular graph at t1 okay the 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 point corresponding to the time at t1 or let's say in time t1 since we are talking about the displacement time graph in time t1 the displacement of the particle is basically s1 so s1 basically represents the displacement in time t1 now let's say in the interval 0 to t2 or in time t2 the displacement is basically given by sk now my intention is to calculate average velocity of the body in this interval of time t1 to t2 as time is elapsed from t1 to t2 what would be the average velocity okay so how to draw that okay so how, sorry how to represent that so to find the average velocity in the interval t1 to t2 imagine drawing a line um, line looks very bad just a minute imagine drawing a line something like this line passing through those two points okay the line looks very bad then the average velocity basically is equal to given by slope of this line okay the same thing is valid instead of let's say we have displacement time graph we have position time graph 
it's still the same okay you you can understand this in a very easy way if we consider a position time graph let's say we have a position time graph something like this okay let's say the graph is let's take a different graph okay so that representation becomes easier let's say at time t1 the position of the particle is given by x1 at time t2 the position of the particle is given by x2 now if we wish to calculate the average velocity in that interval of time t1 to t2 what we are supposed to do we are supposed to draw a line passing through these particular points on that particular graph so the line would look something like this okay basically mathematically if we proceed the slope of a line passing through two points is given by y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1 so if you look at these two points through which it's passing so the coordinates of this point are t2 comma x2 the coordinates of this point are t1 comma x1 the slope of this line basically would be x2 minus x1 divided by t2 minus t1 which is basically the mathematical definition for the average velocity during interval of time the average velocity of a body from position time graph is calculated by okay calculating the slope of line passing through the two points on the curve okay so if we want to calculate instantaneous velocity what do we do again a similar explanation uh, the explanation is valid whether we have position time graph or displacement time graph because as you have seen earlier the graphs both position time graph as well as the displacement time graph both look actually same the only difference is that the position time graph can start from any non zero value or t is equal to 0 depending on its initial position but whereas displacement time graph starts from 0 okay now just think a little bit about it you would understand the reason properly now let's say we have the position versus time graph or the displacement versus time graph for a body it looks something like this let's say okay now our interest is to calculate okay graphically the instantaneous velocity of that body of that body at some particular instant of time let's say t1 so time t1 the position of the particle is nothing but x1 let's say now we want to calculate the instantaneous velocity at t1 okay from the graph so what how we can calculate is okay first represent that corresponding point on the graph the point on the graph which corresponds to the time t1 now draw a tangent okay to the curve at that particular point corresponding to the time t1 so this is how the tangent is going to look like so mathematically i mean the slope of a tangent drawn to a curve is dy by dx but in this particular case in the place of y i mean on the y axis we have taken the position or displacement but whereas on the x axis we have taken the time so mathematically we can write it something like this dx by dt the rate of change of position okay or this is also numerically equal to the rate at which its displacement changes or the rate at which it undergoes displacement so the slope of the tangent drawn at that point to the curve is the rate of change of position which is nothing but instantaneous velocity okay so basically the conclusion from here if you have position time graph or velocity time graph slope of tangent drawn at any point to the curve gives us instantaneous velocity okay now let's go to velocity time graph okay now if we are discussing about velocity time graph so in velocity time graph what we basically do if a body is in motion so we represent its velocity as a function of time t 
or in simple terms uh, at every instant you calculate the velocity of the body and you plot it on the graph okay corresponding to its time then you would get so many points and you plot all the points and then you connect them you would get a curve okay let's say the velocity of a body is something like this okay something like this a rough graph now if you observe here this graph seems to be starting from v is equal to 0 okay since this graph basically kind of starts from origin in this case so i can conclude the body is basically starting from rest because at t is equal to 0 as you can see velocity is basically equal to 0 so the body is starting from rest or it has a 0 initial velocity now what how can we find acceleration from velocity time graph okay first let's say we wanted to calculate average acceleration average acceleration during interval is given by v2 minus v1 divided by t2 minus t1 so let us take okay two instants of time t1 and t2 so in this interval of time t1 to t2 during that duration okay I wish to calculate the average acceleration of that particular body okay so what we can do we can represent the points on the graph corresponding to that particular time let's say at time t1 velocity is given by v1 and at time t2 velocity is given by v2 now if you see carefully the coordinates of the first point this point is given by t1 comma v1 and the coordinates of the second point are given by t2 comma v2 so if we draw a tangent something like this passing through those two points okay mathematically if you calculate slope is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 i mean if you observe these two points basically the coordinates of the points are given as t1 comma v1 are the coordinates for the first point on the graph and the second point has coordinates t2 comma v2 so these are the coordinates of both the points so if we basically use the mathematical relation that you have just studied y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1 this is what the slope will be according to that formula now if you see this v2 minus v1 by t2 minus t1 physically it's nothing but the average acceleration of the body during that interval of time okay so that's how we calculate average acceleration now if we need instantaneous acceleration from velocity time graph how do we calculate okay so again same story as a position time graph so let's say we have velocity time graph So we have a graph something like this so at some time t1 let's say i wish to calculate the instantaneous acceleration okay so to find the instantaneous acceleration at time t1 at that instant of time okay first plot the point on the graph corresponding to that particular time then draw a tangent to the graph to the graph at that time okay the slope of that tangent would give us instantaneous acceleration at which time t1 see in this particular case the acceleration of the body will not be constant it will be continuously changing so the slope of the tangent drawn to the graph at the time t1 will only give us acceleration of the body when the time is t1 at the time acceleration also changes so the slope gives us i mean mathematically slope in this case would be dv by dt okay so which is basically acceleration of that particular body okay so one conclusion from this if we want to calculate acceleration or instantaneous acceleration from velocity time graph uh, at any instant of time first plot the point or pick the point on the graph corresponding to that time then draw a tangent to the curve at that particular time then the slope of the tangent gives us instantaneous 
acceleration so we can say something like this slope of tangent drawn to vt graph what does it give us it gives us acceleration or instantaneous acceleration we'll discuss a few examples later okay now what is area under velocity time graph give us during a particular uh, interval of time okay so mathematically there is a lot of explanation behind this okay i will put it in as a point a simple point okay if we have velocity time graph let's consider a velocity time graph something like this okay now what is area under velocity time graph basically give us so area under vt graph during a particular instant of time okay or not instant of time sorry during a particular interval of time gives it gives us displacement during that interval gives us displacement so imagine let's say we are t is equal to 0 the velocity of the particle is basically zero okay let's say this corresponds to t1 and this corresponds to t now our intention is to calculate displacement in the interval 0 to t1 so basically area under velocity time graph gives displacement so in this case if we want to calculate displacement from 0 to t1 which area do we need to consider so the graph between sorry not the graph the area between the graph and the time axis in the interval 0 to t1 this vertically shaded portion so that would be the area let's say that area is given by a1 then the displacement in that interval is basically plus a1 now let's say we wish to calculate displacement in the interval 0 to t2 then how do we calculate it if you wish to calculate the area between 0 to t2 then you have to consider the area between the graph and the time axis in the interval 0 to t1 and then you must also consider area between the graph and the time axis in the interval t1 to t2 okay so let's say this area the area of the shaded portion is given by a now one distinguishing feature okay between the two parts of the graph is between 0 to t1 you see that the velocity is positive that means it's moving along the positive x axis so displacement during that interval will be taken positive but whereas in the interval t1 to t2 the velocity is basically negative so what the negative velocity indicates is that the body is moving along the negative x axis so displacement during that interval will be taken to be negative so the total displacement basically z between 0 to t2 is nothing but displacement z between 0 to t1 which is nothing but plus a1 plus the displacement between t1 to t2 is taken to be negative because the body has a negative velocity so its displacement would also be negative during that duration of time okay so this is how we basically calculate displacement in that interval suppose let's say the same graph velocity time graph is given and then they asked us to find distance traveled distance traveled during that interval okay 0 to t2 so what would be the distance traveled in that particular interval of time see as i told you earlier that uh, the magnitude of the velocity is nothing but the speed okay so if we wish to draw the speed versus time graph from this corresponding velocity time graph this is how the speed versus time graph would be for the same body it's a we represent a speed on y axis and time on x axis okay speed only has 
magnitude it doesn't have the direction so it wouldn't be negative it would always be positive between 0 to t1 the graph for velocity and speed will be the same because it's positive velocity is positive but between t1 to t2 their velocity was negative so when we try to draw the speed here the graph would basically kind of be inverted like this okay with respect to time axis so the negative values would basically become positive value just one minute okay now here the area under speed time graph gives us speed time graph basically gives us distance travel so if this has area a1 this has area a2 so the total distance travel would be a1 plus a2 okay you need not to draw this graph speed versus time graph when they ask you to find the distance so what you can basically do is okay you can find the answer from this graph itself so calculate all the areas so wherever the portion is above the time axis consider it to be positive the area below the time axis also take it as positive if your intention is to calculate distance but while calculating the displacement take areas above the time axis or during the interval where velocity is positive take that to be positive and during that interval where velocity is negative take area in that interval to be negative so that's how we calculate uh, displacement from velocity time graph now let's move on to acceleration time graph okay acceleration time graph okay so just one minute so what is uh, area under acceleration time graph basically gives okay so what area under acceleration time graph basically gives is suppose let's say we have acceleration time graph something like this now so just one minute let's let's pick two points on the graph okay corresponding to the time t1 and t2 this is how the acceleration time graph of a particular body is okay now the area under the acceleration time graph or in other words the area between acceleration time curve graph and time axis okay uh, this shaded portion in the interval t1 to t2 is area under the graph in that interval of time let's say that area is given by a then that area would be equal to change in velocity of the body during that interval of time t1 to t2 so here v2 corresponds velocity of the body at time t2 and v1 corresponds velocity of the body at time t1 since acceleration is basically a vector quantity so here also the sign of the area must also be considered okay as we did in the case of displacement calculation okay from velocity time graph okay. what do i mean by that suppose let's say we have acceleration time graph something like this okay so we have the graph acceleration time graph of a body varies something like this now my intention is to calculate change in velocity during the interval 0 to 2 okay or velocity at t2 minus velocity at 0 okay so how we can calculate that okay area under acceleration time graph gives us change in velocity keep in mind it doesn't give us velocity it gives us change in velocity okay so if this area is plus a1 this area is taken let's say a2 then the change in velocity would be plus a1 minus a2 so the sign is also very much important okay so this is what area under acceleration time graph gives okay now mathematically okay how do we conclude that the slope gives something and area gives something else okay so to understand that let's take this example you see here we define velocity as rate of change of position and acceleration as 
rate of change of velocity so basically if we have x versus t graph the slope slope of xt graph gives v slope of xt graph similarly from here slope of v versus t graph gives acceleration okay now what about areas so now if you make little rearrangement to this particular two relations so dx would be nothing but v into dt so what this basically means is that your dt is nothing but still a small time interval but very 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 small time interval something like infinitesimally small time interval if at this instant of time the velocity of the body is v then during the next small interval of time dt okay the very small change in position or infinitesimally small change in position of the body is given by dx okay or this is only for a short duration of time or a very a small interval of time so if you wish to calculate okay so the ch change in position of a body for some particular interval of time okay provided that you know velocity as a function of time then what we can do okay we can basically integrate these functions let's say my interest is to calculate okay the change in position of the body in the interval t1 to t2 let's say t1 the position is given by x1 at t2 the position is given by x2 integral dx would basically be x which is equal to integral v dt t1 to t2 now if we substitute this upper and lower limits we would get x2 minus x1 which would be nothing but integral v dt t1 to t2 this x2 minus x1 the left hand quantity of this relation is basically the change in position of the body but whereas the right hand quantity that you see integral t1 to t2 v dt it graphically represents area under velocity time graph okay area under velocity time graph in the interval t1 to t2 so this thing graphically represents suppose let's say we had a velocity time graph something like this say this is t1 this is t2 then that integral whatever we have written so this shaded portion mathematically we can write it something like this integral v dt t1 to t2 okay now similarly if you have i mean if we similarly proceed with okay a is equal to dv by dt so what we would basically get so we would again get okay we would get v2 minus v1 similar relation again change in velocity is nothing but a dt t1 to t2 so area under acceleration time graph gives us change in velocity in the interval t1 to t2 okay and one small observation from here this change in position during that interval of time is also nothing but the displacement of the body in the interval t1 to t2 okay so this is about the graphs and what how we can calculate different things from the graph let's discuss a few simple examples okay of how the questions can be framed from these things now let's say your intention is to plot the graph of a body okay which is basically at rest let's try to calculate position time graph displacement time graph velocity time graph and acceleration time graph for a body at rest let's say body is at rest let's assume let's assume the body was at rest and the position where it was at rest was x is equal to 3 so if it's at rest it's basically not moving so at any point of time it position would be same that position i am considering it to be 3 now if i draw position time graph this is how the position time graph would be x t at any time t the position would basically be same which is 3 units okay at all the times 
the position doesn't change okay so basically the graph would be a straight line perpendicular to the position axis which is nothing but in this particular case the vertical axis okay now if we draw the displacement time graph you see the displacement is basically change in position we said okay since position is not changing so at any time the position is the same finally after some time position is 3 initially position was 3 so the change in position or the displacement is equal to 0 so the graph would basically coincide with the time axis because at any point on the time axis the s would be equal to 0 now how would uh, velocity and acceleration will be for this particular body so velocity would be 0 and acceleration would also be 0 so both velocity time graphs and acceleration time graphs would be identical in this case okay so i'm going to draw only one graph so both the graphs will basically coincide with the time axis okay so this is how it could be now let's take the next case of uh, a body having uniform motion uniform motion in the sense that uh, it's moving with a constant velocity uh, let's assume that constant velocity is given by 2 meter per second you see that i have taken the constant velocity to be positive plus 2 meter per second that plus indicates that it's moving basically along the positive x direction okay now and let's assume the initial position of the particle is basically same as before which is 3 meters then if we draw the position time graph for this particular body okay so this is how it's going to be at t is equal to 0 the position is given by 3 and you see that velocity is constant okay so as we discussed earlier okay so the slope of tangent drawn to position time graph gives us velocity velocity is dx by dt so in this case v is constant if v is constant then at any point of time velocity is constant indicates that at any point of time slope of tangent drawn to the graph must be same okay so that's possible only when the graph is a straight line when the graph is a straight line at any two points on the graph if you draw the tangent the tangent would basically coincide with the line and slope would be equal to that of the line so that's one way of concluding that the graph position time graph will be a straight line if the body is moving with uniform velocity the other way of concluding it is okay mathematically if v is constant if it doesn't change with the time that's only possible when x is dependent on t linearly or x proportional to t power 1 if x is proportional to t power 1 or x depends on t linearly so the graph would be a line basically and what about the slope of this particular line let's say it makes an angle theta okay with uh, that particular horizontal time axis then basically slope is given by tan theta which would be equal to dx by dt as we discussed slope gives us slope to position time graph gives us velocity so this would be equal to v or tan theta in this particular case is 2 okay now how would the displacement time graph will be for the same body so the displacement time graph will have the same shape as the position time graph the only difference is that here it starts from the point where it was present initially but displacement time graph would basically start from zero okay so it would have the same inclination as the position time graph the only difference is it basically kinds of uh, 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 starts from the origin okay i mean at t is equal to zero the displacement would be zero then what about the velocity time graph how it would be so since velocity is constant that means at any point of time okay the velocity is the same so the graph would basically be a line which is perpendicular to the velocity axis where it intersects the velocity axis at 2 indicating that at any time t velocity is 2 meter per second then what about uh, 
the acceleration diagram if we observe here acceleration is basically given by dv by dt here v is a constant and derivative of a constant is basically zero so acceleration of the body would be zero okay or if a body is moving with constant velocity it is not said to be accelerated or it is not accelerating so in this case since acceleration is zero the graph would basically coincide with time axis okay this is how the graph is going to be okay now let's proceed with uh, uh position time graph for a particle moving with uniform acceleration okay that we will discuss in the next part because uh, writing the relations is a bit complicated at this moment okay so we would uh, discuss that under acceleration time graph okay uh, this is enough for this video in the next video okay we will uh, discuss a little bit more about the graph then we will enter into uh, understanding the motion of a body which is accelerated uniformly okay we'll meet in the next video again bye